session, legislative session that's wrapping up right now, um, and some stuff that's affecting the real estate community. So that's what we're going to talk about, right? Absolutely. I forgot to hit start on our video, so we're going to get into that a little bit oh. later, YouTubers. Sorry. Oh, well, they just missed us having a drink. It's okay. Okay. Fantastic. It's been a while since mm -hmm. we've done this. I am kind of yeah. rusty, I think. Yeah, I think it was January, so we're long overdue. We're back. Got some updates for you. And... You've been busy. Yeah, it's been busy. Lots of stuff with the legislature. Absolutely. Lots of stuff with the diversion. And we need it now, because that was no fun, even though we didn't completely have a 2009 flood all over again. It did cause a lot of stress. Yeah. We did go sandbag, build some sandbags, high five. Um, that was interesting and fun. Mm -hmm. But I definitely realize why people are stressed out about the water, because there was a lot of it. It's still pretty yeah. darn high. Yep. County Road 20, though, up north is finally open again, so that's Good. nice. Especially because right now, downtown Main Avenue has started road construction. Mm -hmm. So if you ever are down there at 5 o'clock, which I was for the last two days, it is a nightmare. Go around. Especially because only one, you know, that one bridge is closed and 12th Avenue North Bridge is closed. Trying to go to Moorhead, so. Yeah. yeah. County Road 20 was quick. Nice. I actually took that last night now that you mention it. And you weren't worried it was closed? Mm -hmm. I didn't even, didn't, even, didn't even occur to me. So I got lucky. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Now we're going to be on road construction the next time, I'm guessing, because there's a lot of it. Yeah. That could be our next podcast is what's going on with that. Give you guys updates. I know Absolutely. Patty just sent out that really good um, informational email. So we'll update you on that next time. Right. So today we are going to be going over just updates in North Dakota. We're going to start talking about what has happened in this legislative session. Don and I got the opportunity to go to the Capitol this year with NDAR and write a bunch of letters supporting all kinds of stuff going on with real estate in our industry this year. So we've got all kinds of updates on what has passed, what they're still tinkering on, and um, and then a diversion update at the end. Absolutely. It was really cool to actually go to the Capitol because I had never been there. I've been to Bismarck a lot of times, but in my entire life living in North Dakota, I've never been to the Capitol. Which so. is crazy. I'm glad I got to experience it with you. It was cool. And I hadn't done a tour yet. If you get an opportunity to take a quick tour, it didn't take long at all. And we mm -hmm. got to learn about how it's Art Deco and kind of Gatsby vibe. It's very And we pretty. got to go to the monkey room. Yep, we got to go into like a secret room, yes, that has this very rare wood and all these eyes stare at you. Anyways, and the it was upstairs, cool. the view it was beautiful, so absolutely. take a trip, take a tour. Okay, so you want to get into what's been going on with legislative session a little bit, Don? Oh, House Bill 1250 was for our brokers to be added to the Century Code. Mm -hmm. And our biggest push was to increase pre-licensure, licensure, that's a hard word, for real estate professionals from 45 hours to 90 hours. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a big push because people thought we were doing it so that less people would get into real estate, but it actually was to increase our knowledge of um, for the people that are in real estate because our bordering states all have 90 hours or more even. Yeah, it was a really big deal. It was around when this started kind of formulating at NDAR, um, and it's really, we want to up the professionalism in our industry too, and this is a huge way to do it, and North Dakota up until this point was third lowest out of all 50 states, so it's just time. Yeah, it was, yeah, 45 hours didn't seem like enough mm -hmm. with the stuff that you did learn, um, yeah, and even to have push up our continuing ed every year too, a mm -hmm. little bit, so yep, that will be yep. nice. We did and post hours as well from 9 to 12 yep. every year. So that'll be good too for the professionalism. Absolutely. Keeps everybody on their toes and keeps them learning and growing in the business because mm -hmm. things change. They do. And, um, oh, geez, I just forgot what I was going to say. And, and I don't know. Yeah. What were you going to say? There was something about that. Oh, they actually surveyed new licensees too in the past five years and asked them if they felt they had had enough education gearing oh. them up to come into it and almost all of them said no they wanted more right training before yep. just 
getting into it and learning from their brokers. So. Well, and even for me, for the last couple of years too, even though we only need nine um, continuing ed, I think I've been averaging 12 or 15, so mm -hmm. going above, because there's things that pop up or we have the, what do you call it? The caravan that comes around and mm -hmm. it's just something that you wanna learn and it's easier to take place in person, like the in-room, in-person classroom is so much better because you learn more and people bring up questions that maybe you didn't think of and it just starts a conversation. Absolutely. I feel like I retain more when I go right. to a class in person than if I'm just taking it online. Absolutely. So, yeah, so we were, we were big proponents to um, upping our <laughs> credits, or hours, I should say. Amber's computer just died on her and that's why we it's a moment of panic. have those panic moments here. We're back. We are. Um, what's the other house bill? So I just put in a couple of other ones that, like House Bill 1110 is regarding electronic signatures. That passed, and that will not only be helpful to the real estate industry, that'll be helpful to many different industries. So that's mm -hmm. cool, just for you guys to know, not everything we're going to talk about is specifically real estate orientated. We just want to kind of update you on what we learned. We learned here's a hot button one. Oh, House Bill 1251 regarding seller property disclosures. Um, it was a big debate on this because they only wanted it to be mandated to people that were real estate agents or in real estate. To have to, if you were working with a real estate agent to sell your house, you had to disclose and fill out a disclosure. So that became the big push. And the reasoning for this and the reasoning that the real estate community wasn't fully supportive as we want to be, as we should be, mm -hmm. is because for sale by owners now don't have to. Um, we also wanted it to be a little bit more into if it's a lake home or if it's a, you know, an estate that you lived in or a little bit more, I don't know, just yep. teeth in it, a little bit more right. teeth in it. And unfortunately, that was just not going to happen this year, but we still have a foot in the door. They did pass it. So there's now something. There right. was nothing. It's a start. It's a start. So we can build off of that in years to come and maybe get a little bit more restriction on it. I know one yep. of the big things too was that there's not really a good way to enforce it right. for for sale by owners or to even have a form for them to use or to get it out to them that they need to. So that's mm -hmm. something that we're gonna have to look at on the state level and how could we provide solutions to those questions to move be a, that yeah. forward. Would it be requiring it to close? Mm -hmm. Like title work requiring a yeah. disclosure. And then who would provide that disclosure? Right. And it just gets a little tricky. But so. at least it's on their radar too for the next biennium when they meet again. Yep. And now we know, and we've got two years at the state level to say, what can we come up with for a solution? Is there something that we could provide to them? Is there, you know, or maybe we shouldn't be involved in it. And that'll be discussed the next two years, I'm sure. Right. All the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Other big items um, to be passed this year were House Bill 1066, known as the Prairie Dog Bill. Mm -hmm. And the Prairie Dog Bill basically uses money from the oil industry to fund infrastructure across the state. So it's kind of um, like a savings account for the state. And it just, they kind of went over how and what it can be used for. And yeah. it did pass. So. And I think I saw a chart too breaking down kind of uh, populous versus the right. amount of money you would get for your area based on population a little bit. Right. So the town of Union, which has four people in it, oh. um, and the town of Fargo that has, you know, 100,000 people, definitely different shares of the pot, but everybody gets a share. Cool. So that's good at that one passed. Um, House Bill 1041 for the Homestead Tax Credit passed as well. And the homestead tax credit is similar to what Minnesota has for homestead. So homestead basically means you live in your house, whereas non-homestead would be maybe that you had it as a rental. So mm -hmm. you get a credit for actually owning your house versus Perfect. owning it as a rental. Yeah, I know that's a big thing in Minnesota. Absolutely. Cool. Yep. And then Senate Bill uh, 2091 regarding floodplain management, that just kind of broke everything down a little bit more. That passed and what areas are going to be doing what? 
over the course of the next two years. Yep. So that's good. And the floodplain management wasn't just Fargo. It was Minot. No. It was Bismarck. It's everywhere that's had some issues with water. Not, mm -hmm. you know, it could be overland flooding. It could be a river. Yeah, there was a whole list of yep. different projects associated with different areas. So that's great that that passed. And on to the crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, and there's still a few things that they're talking about. Oh, right. The Senate Bill 2306 is regarding basically automatically giving a military spouse a license or... And it just doesn't just apply to real estate. It was really any occupation right. that had big requirements so that when they moved, they wouldn't have to go without work. Right. But there was some stipulation like you had to be licensed somewhere else for seven years. Yep, there you was have a, to be practicing. There yep. was a lot of good language in there, but it still is kind of mucky, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that's why they're still working on it. Right. They want to do something, but they don't want it to be an issue. Right. Too. Right. And the law, for me, I guess the only thing that held me up for real estate, and I'm sure it would be a lot of other fields, is... Our state laws are so different than other state laws, and mm -hmm. I think you still need to know those when you move. Right. And it's probably what they're going to go it through in committee is each occupation is going to have like a, I don't know, like a cheat sheet or what do you call it? Cliff notes yeah. of what the state would be. So Yeah, and then maybe they take a small exam or something. Right. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens mm -hmm. there. Um, Senate Bill 2040, protesting specials, and House Bill 1474, tax lieu of specials, tax in lieu of specials, sorry, I could have said that better. Um, those are both still being hammered out. They want to do stuff to get specials down. They're working on it, and that's right. important. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's kind of what the Prairie Dog Bill, too, kind of covers a little bit of that because some of the money from the Prairie Dog Bill be used for infrastructure, which could, in place, um, lower some specials in some of the new development areas, too. Great. So, yeah. We need kind some of a, help there. Yeah. It's kind of like a snowball effect. Like, one thing first, and then you've got the other. Like, hammer that out. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. Because if we mm -hmm. have more money for infrastructure, then that, that would lower leaves that. more money to be used yeah. to lower specials or do whatever else. Right taking away from creating new roads and stuff. Right. Cool. I know. Very right? cool. I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah. And um, the one thing, too, obviously, we were talking about construction earlier. I did call the city of West Fargo because I wanted to know when um, it does have that pending special for Cheyenne Street of, like, 3200 bucks, And I'm like, well, when is that going to hit my specials? They have no idea. So it could be. Um, but then I was talking to my in-laws that live in Fargo. And they just got their bill for something that finished in 2016. So okay. it's bonded and it's averaged and then you don't get assessed it like on your taxes for a couple of years. Okay. So um, the stuff for Cheyenne Street will be um, spread over, over 25 years and it does have a 5% interest rate. That won't change. It just, they don't have an exact date when it will actually hit. Okay, well that's so, good to know. That's yeah. a good update. Thanks, Don. And the last thing that we have in regarding anything for legislation, there's other bills so that much. were passed and stuff. We just gave you some hot ones that we thought were, were kind of important and pertinent. Um, Trust bills, right? Yeah, Senate Bill 2315, hunting and posting. Um, bill, it, primarily when it was brought to us on the NDAR level, was more so trespassing and the issues that they had with, oh gosh, help me out. Um, with the signs, every like if you own land, you had to put up um, no trespassing signs every so often. And, you know, our winters are horrible. The winds are horrible. The signs fall down. So it was up to that landowner to actually put up all the signs around his property. And they're trying to figure out a way to put it online so that people could reach out to get permission that way versus I don't even know how they do it because I'm not a hunter. Um, yeah. I'm sure they just just, just visually yep, looking visually for posted, looking for the posted. not posted property, and yep. then they had all of the issues with the trespassers, and then you don't know if it's just a sign there, if they're just taking it out. I mean, right. how do you right. regulate that? So, That's a hard one. 
they're working really hard. They had talked about creating an app. I'm not sure where they're at, but the bill started pretty messy and it's gotten a lot better and it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. There definitely needs to be something there for property owner rights right. um, and to allow hunters to hunt on land where the owners are fine with that, but to also keep people from trespassing and using that land inappropriately. Absolutely. Um, so tricky stuff. That's a tricky one. Yeah. But I think an app is definitely the wave of the future, shall we say. Yeah, so. good start. Absolutely. So um, we're going to move on to the FM diversion update. So we've got a couple of new things happening there. Nothing too... Well, there's a couple of really good things happening. Well, yes, there are a couple of good things happening. We probably um, won't start with that, but we've got some updates for you. We do. Um it was nice to see the flood wall downtown actually work, so that's mm -hmm. kind of nice. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the things that they've already done in the city of Fargo have really helped um, create a little bit of ease, shall we say, but the water was still high. Mm -hmm. um, but Senate Bill 2020. Yeah. So it's, they're still finalizing that in appropriations. And it sounds like from everything I've seen on the updates that come out weekly in the video I watched that... We're requesting another $300 million from North Dakota to make our contribution from North Dakota $870 million. They've already committed to, prior to anything, $570 million. And it sounds like they're going to give us more, possibly to the tune of $100 million more, or maybe a little bit more than that. But mm -hmm. they're not. it's not sounding like we're getting the full $300 million. Um, they're very much wanting Minnesota to step up. Minnesota is going to be receiving 20% of the benefits of the diversion, and they're only kicking in $43 million, which is just kind of crazy, because if you look at it, and Don, speak a little bit to that. It, yeah, if you look at it, they're getting, um, yeah, they're getting coverage that they shouldn't for the amount of money that they're putting in, so um, it's still going to protect a lot of Minnesota. I mean, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. So locally, it's gonna, and it's not going to impact Minnesota as much, but it's going to help them. Yes. So, yeah. And locally, we're coming up with 1,044 million locally, just so everyone knows what skin we've got in the game. We're the furthest invested. And federally, they did just commit to that extra 300 million we requested, mm -hmm. which is huge. Thank you, federal government. So they're at 750 million. State of North Dakota, we wanted eight seventy. We're probably in the six hundred seventy million dollar range, um, and then Minnesota. And then Minnesota's forty three. They're not even at a hundred. No. So um, hopefully they'll help us out. Help us out, Minnesota. Yeah. What is that? Two percent. Yeah. It's about just a very small sliver. small piece of the pie. Yeah, they're at about two percent of the whole picture. And technically, if they did bump up to a hundred million, they're really not even contributing twenty percent, mm -hmm. which it's going to be receiving twenty percent of the benefit. So, yeah. So hopefully they can do something there. Otherwise, I'm sure we'll figure it out. We're pretty close. I mean, if you're thinking almost three billion dollars, right? And we're maybe short around two hundred million right now. We're very, very close to being fully funded. That's like unfathomable almost because of the dollar amount. You think? Yeah. Wow. That's big. Though. Big. I'm glad it's not my no bank account that that right. has to come out of. But as it's as it gets built and you can actually go and see the progress, that'll be interesting to actually see the the dams that are being built and the mm -hmm. you know the big mounds that are coming up. Yeah, and that's cool that you just talked about that because that's the last thing we're going to touch on. Um, U.S. District Court Judge John A. Tenheim. I don't know if I said that right but he modified the injunction that we currently have um, to allow all requested construction to proceed on the FM diversion, diversion project while things are getting worked out between the Buffalo Watershed District and it sounds like R Richland and Wilkin County have some contestation there too, so yep. to speak. They're yep. gonna contest something. So they're letting them work. Yes, construction should begin. Mm -hmm. And they're letting them work on the, it's the North Dakota side everything that's coming is the work can be done on the North Dakota side which is awesome because then it doesn't add another year or two years depending on how long this injunction or how long this contest takes you know yeah. how much are they gonna contest it 
Yeah. And how do you, how do you get them on board? I mean, hopefully with the scare and the threat that we had this year, that that will help them see that it does need to be done. Well, it helps a lot too, and it says in the same article that, you know, we've got the Army Corps of Engineers backing right. us. They they were part of helping getting this injunction to allow construction to proceed, and as well as Minnesota DNR, who used Absolutely. to be against us, they're now with, with us. us. They're fighting with us. Um, so and obviously, really, the federal government wants it done too because yeah. uh, they're you know that's funding. If something were to happen, that they would have to help us out with. Yeah. More. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that kind of wraps up what's going on. We'll keep you updated. I'm going to be updating the blog shortly. I was kind of hoping to get all the final numbers from appropriations from the state of North Dakota before I update it, so it might be in the next couple weeks that you'll see that come out on Facebook. Um, right, because the legislature, legislature hasn't completely, um, what do you call it? Wrapped it up yet. Wrapped it up for the year, so they're still doing some committee meetings and hammering out some bills, so... Yeah, there's still things to be done. Yeah, so that's, that's about, us. That's <laughs> about it. That's about what's going on. Hopefully, you found this educational and learned a thing or two. My brain hurts sometimes. There's a lot to know. There's a lot going on right now. I'm excited for this legislative session to be wrapping up. It was very involved from the Realtor Association this year with the diversion fight, with all of the bills that we wanted passed to make our professionalism better. It's been a very um, big workload which is good we're happy to help but i'm ready to have them wrap it up yeah, wrap it up wrap Absolutely. it up okay so we'll wrap it up right now on our session thank you for joining us who are we don done i forgot Man, it's we're, well we're diamond realty associates and we are a client focused team we do one-on-one -on -one service the whole way through we just want to help you achieve your goals um, is it buy is it sell is it move out of the area is it move into the area we're going to tell you all about the area yeah is it investing in the area? Mm -hmm. We can answer all that for you, and we'd be happy to. Um, what do we have coming up? Did we do? We might have to just post a Tasty Tuesday winner. I uh, know. I think we have Tasty Tuesday next week. So do we? Yeah. Perfect. I don't Perfect. even know where we're going, so I can't even say where we're going and yeah. make it, you know, make people be able to cheat for next week. So no, no hinting. No. No so, hinting. Anyway, and then in July we're gonna have our client appreciation we party. Are. And that is open to everyone to come out, meet us, enjoy food, enjoy fun activities at Row, Row Farm. Row Farm. On 25th Street. And we'll have dates and all of that in the next podcast for you. Absolutely. Until so, then. How do you contact us? You can reach us at buysellfmhomes.com. Find us on Facebook, Diamond Realty Associates. And if you want to call, we have this wonderful Google number that calls us all at the same time. Interesting. 701-526-4935. And as always, stay, stay classy, classy FM. FM. Boom. Bye.